welcome to Fiber Shop Tutorial Series. This is the last chapter of the series which we use Fiber Shop in action. We create a small project and use 3ds Max to create hair cards and render them in Marmoset Toolbag. This tutorial is not a complex and complete guide to create hair cards. In this chapter, we will create a fur ball using 3ds Max hair and fur modifier. It only demonstrates how to use Fibershop for hair cards texture creation, mapping and rendering setup. Hair card creation for characters is a very complex and time consuming task which needs good level up of skill and experience. There are many tutorials on YouTube you can learn from and start practicing until you get good at it. Alright, if you're ready, let's create our furball. As the first step of the process, we need to model some hair cards in 3ds Max. We use a simple plane and apply a bend modifier to give it a little curve. Then we duplicate it and duplicate it again to have three different cards as we want three different layers of fur. A very important part of the process is setting up the pivot point of the cards. As final step, we need to create some UV mapping for our cards and render a UV Atlas template for using in Fibershop. Ok, move to Fibershop and lock document size as we want to place overlay on blocks. Pick UV Atlas image and set the opacity. Now we can create and place our fibers right on the UV Atlas. Let's start with a basic scatter and add some details into it. We create three different size blocks to add more variation to furball. Alright, let's bake it and create our fiber textures. Before going into texture creation, let's set up our material, hair base color and baker properties like AO, padding and normal. Ok, now we bake with 1k resolution and start the texture creation. We use root to tip filter to add some shade to albedo and adjust the color with a solid color filter to give a darker shade to hair color. As we want a furry ball with a smooth shading we need to switch the fiber rendering method from tube to flat. Ok, let's set up some parameters to have a better view on a specular. To create a specular channel, we simply use its trans ID in translucency channels. Gradients can act as curves for leveling our channels. So we use a custom area to adjust the power of ambient channel. We are all set. Let's create an admins exporting setup and export the fibers.
Now we need to apply our textures to fibers for a good preview of fibers while fair generation. Before that, we need to adjust the UV mapping on cards. The Reduce Max hair and fur root to tip starts from the bottom to the top, so we need to rotate our UV lens. This is one of the most important steps to have a nice and clean fur ball. Let's just start with the thickest fur layer. After we're done with the layer, we convert it to mesh and start new layer. Don't forget to change the seed parameter on hair and fur modifier. Okay, now we have three layers. Let's put them back together and export them as FPX file to render the furball and tool back. In tool back, we set up our material and shading in three steps basic, advanced, and with subsurface scattering known as 3 S. Switch from ray tracing to rasterizer in between of process to make sure it looks good in both rendering modes. First, we set the albedo a normal. Then use our multi-channel texture to set a specular and glossiness. It's the time to apply alpha to our cards. You can use cutout method for stylized hairs, but for realistic hair rendering, you need to set transparency to death hair mode. As you can see, death hair mode gives a very good looking and clean fur feeling. Alright, we're done with the basic setup, let's move to add more details. Let's add more light to see the effect of material parameters, then we add occlusion and cavity to furs. As you can see, it has a dramatic effect on the specular. Using cavity, you get a more realistic reflection on furs. Now, we add some secondary reflections for better shading.
If you have a powerful graphic card, you can use subdivision on furs to give a better and a smoother looking to them. Alright, good job. As the last step of process, we add some light scattering effect to our furs, so it reacts realistic with the back lighting. Let's use a steady lighting and add some direct lights at behind our fur ball. Next, head to the transmission and select Volumetric Scattering. Set the depth of the scattering and know we have a scattering within our furs. Also, add a little bit of fuzz as hairs are fuzzy as well. Now we have a very good looking fur, let's finalize a render by adding some post-process effect and dip of field. And here we go. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial series and I could teach you something helpful. See you in the next life.